This film is so good. And I know I'm not the only person who thinks that. Like, you only have to go on kind of Twitter or anything to see that everyone thinks the same. I was, I was going to ask, when, at what point do you as actors know you're on to a winner? You've had some great hits in your careers. Is it as early as the script stage? Is it on set? Or is it usually when you've seen the, the finished product? I feel like with most films, it's the leap into the great unknown, that feeling of like putting your feet to the fire. I think on a Chris Nolan film. It's when you, get, when you hear, hi, it's Chris Nolan. And you go, you're like, oh, oh yeah. my God. You know, I think there's, I think we knew we were making something rare. And I think you know it when he calls and you know it when you read the script. And it's his passion, it's his conviction, it's his surety that's so inspiring. And his vast, colossal talent that you get to kind of bathe in and be around. and. But I think I was completely floored when I saw the film. And I think yeah. I have found it to be one of his most emotional ones. I think it really leaves people feeling distraught. And I'm so proud. I think that Nolan can almost be likened to Oppenheimer in a sense that there's a not kind of conventional way of thinking in his respective field. He really wants to push boundaries and do the kind of things that people sort of haven't sort of seen before. Uh, because of that kind of intelligence, I've always found the prospect of meeting him maybe kind of intimidating. <laughs> when you sort of collaborate with him, is that creative intelligence, does that come through in kind of conversations or is that something that really mainly comes through in his art? What's so strange about Chris is that he's got this magnificent brain that's yeah. equal parts left and right. So he's got this engineering brain that kind of, you know, ma can make these this spectacle and this kind of scale and scope of these movies that are just as big as anything being made. Mm. Um, and he can ask these really profound questions, but he's got this, the, the, he understands the intimacy and he understands, he's got a really high EQ, so he understands like the emotion uh, and and so he's super approachable. Like he, yeah, well, that's he the loves thing. a gossip. Yeah, no, he's like a very. I sent him on the boat. I was telling him this story the other day, and he was like, "Oh no, I have to hear this story." What is it <laughs> like? He just loves that as well. Like he's, he and the way he is with actors, he creates an environment where you are not intimidated. It's right. the last thing he wants is for you to be intimidated by him. Um, he just expects you to just be there to be a part of this sort of force field he's created for everyone, and he's. He's gentle, he's quiet, he's collaborative, he's really curious. So I think he's, he's very, everything. he's Super creatively curious creative. while there's somehow he's able to keep the vision of what he's trying to do because he's got a very strong, I, he really understands what he's doing and why, but he's great at collaborating and teasing out the best in everybody and 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 in real time incorporating that into this thing that he's building. It's 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 awesome. I mean, you've both worked with some incredible filmmakers and actors. I mean, obviously, Chris Nolan, another to, to add to this list. At this stage in your career, do you still have, like, wish lists? Are there still people that you, you just really would love to work with and collaborate with actors sure. or filmmakers? Oh, endless, mm. yeah, constant. Constant, I can't even think of any of them. Now. But, but, I, but if I could <laughs> the just... The list is very long. If I could just work with the people that I've worked with, I would be completely satisfied at this point, too. If you too, could just yeah. work with Emily Blunt. If I could just do all be, my movies with Emily you Blunt. You would be super happy. <laughs> But I, I, mean, I thought you it's quite a unique character, really, because I think there's a kind of maybe misconception where we almost think there's a kind of contrast between a scientist and a kind of soldier. And I think your character had this kind of blend where it shows the worlds can collide in some ways. I just wondered if that's quite interesting. Collide to, to is play. a good word because yeah. <laughs> philosophically they're pretty opposed in mm. the sense that the military is obsessed with secrecy and the scientists were obsessed with kind of openness so that they could they could do their work. And, and so that was a natural tension. But I think Groves kind of straddled the two, understood that... He needed the scientists, understood, he was very smart. He went to MIT, he was a very uh, smart guy, but, um, and so it perhaps was a little more permissive. Um, and Oppenheimer could appeal to that side of him, you know, to say like, look, I know we need compartmentalization, but we also need to be sharing information or we're not gonna get there. No, I always thought there was, in, in this, it showed there was kind of a reverence for the scientists back then. Do you think that our relationship with experts or scientists has changed across the last few decades? Mm. Sure, I think certainly with scientists, but probably because the applications were so, uh, they, the applications had bearing on, on everybody's life. You know, to say our greatest scientist is working on the biggest bomb, during the middle of a, 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 a pitched battle between fascism and democracy, mm. you go, okay, I understand that, and the scientist, who, you know, is a hero who can figure that out. You know, now I think it feels like everything's diversified into these smaller sciences that probably are less kind of top of brain for people. So the scientists have become maybe a little more anonymous, but um, but they shouldn't be. No.
No, it's just one of the million themes that make this film so good. So thank you so much, guys. Thank much you so much. Cheers. Take care. Thank Cheers. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey you 